Hello friends, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. Today I'm in Lightroom Classic and editing a landscape. And one of the things I find myself doing more and more and more often is using a particular kind of mask in Lightroom because it's so powerful and gives you so much control, which is really what masking is all about. It's being able to control the edits and place them in the part of the photo where you want that edit to go. Masking is the ideal tool for that. And I'm gonna dive into one of my favorite masking tools in Lightroom in this video. Let's go ahead and get started. Now, the first thing I got to do, this is the base raw file unedited, is I need to lift those shadows and I'm going to go pretty high. In fact, I'm going to go all the way to 100. I'm going to pull down the highlights slightly and just add a tiny bit of contrast. Overall, pretty simple and straightforward. That's it. That's all I'm doing. It's literally just basic adjustments. So before and after and this is where I like to jump into masking. I do my basic stuff. Sometimes I do a couple of other things, but generally speaking, it's basic edits, which is the global edits, adjusting the overall look and feel of the photo. Then I jump into masking to start customizing the look of things. So I'm going to click on masking and the mask type that I'm talking about today is in the range mask category and it's color range mask. Luminance range mask is something I use a lot and probably talk about a lot because they're so useful. But today we're just talking about color range masks. I've had some questions about them and I use them a lot. And in a poll I did on my newsletter a while back, a lot of folks said, hey, I'd like some more tutorials around color range masking. Here you go. So thanks for watching. So here is my photo without any mask. And all you do is if you want to go add a new color range mask, which I already selected, you just first, you've, you've got this dropper and you select a color range. Now what I want to do first is play with these blues a little bit in the sky. So I'm going to grab that blue. And as soon as you do it, it highlights everything that it identifies in that color range. But you have this refine slider, which allows you to either increase or decrease the color range that's included in that mask. You'll also notice that there is a color there representative of the color that I selected. So I can see it by looking at it and it says, you know, hey, this is kind of a light blue color. So I know that I selected the color that I want. If I click refine and drag it to the right, it's going to get more of that blue, even though a lot of this doesn't really look blue to me. It's picking up that color in a lot of places. And if I contract that to, and go to the left, I'm getting, of course, a lot less of it. So in this case, it defaults to 50, by the way. But in this case, I end up going to a little bit higher in the 50s, like maybe 58 or 59. And that's what I have. I like that selection. And what I want to do is I'm trying to create a little bit more contrast in the sky. So for me, that's going to be an exposure reduction. Now, I do recommend that you're being gentle with these kind of things, because if you start to do too much, of course, you're going to make it uh, very unnatural, right? So I just want to go a little bit darker for a tiny bit more contrast. And I'm actually going to take the temperature down as well, just to make it a little bit bluer. So pretty minor adjustments. But what you're going to find is we're going to use several of these masks. And when you start to stack things, of course, you have a huger uh, a larger and larger impact on the photo, which is what you'll see. So if you look at the before, and there it is before, and the after, you can see quite a bit more contrast in the sky, a little bit more depth, and that sort of thing. So I'm happy with that, but I'm not done with the sky. So I'm going to go ahead and click to create a new mask and get color range one more time. And this time I'm going to come over here and get a little bit of this kind of sunsetty orange look. So I'm going to go ahead and click that, and you will see my color range. It's got a slide or excuse me, a dot there to represent the color range that I've got. And I'm going to shrink this a little bit. I'm going down to like mid 20s. So something about like that. And all I want to do is make those a little bit warmer. So I'm trying to add a little bit more warmth to this sunset. And so a way to do that is to add that to where it exists in the clouds already. So there we go. I went to about 15 on warmth. So if you look at the before, there it is a little bit less warm and after a little bit more warm again. Just going kind of gentle, just controlling this and putting the specific edits in specific places. Uh, now I'm going to get into some of the more fun aspects of this, and that is a color range mask working on some of the colors down here, like in these trees. This was a fall shot from Colorado last year. Had some beautiful color and, of course, a beautiful sunset. And I'm going to isolate some of these colors and accentuate them. So I picked that orange. You can see that the color range identified is right there, but that is not exactly, and it's covering really the whole foreground. I don't want that. So I'm going to pull this uh, refine slider down. And what I do is I start to isolate some of those colors and get it uh, this adjustment I'm going to make out of some of those other colors that are kind of bordering the color that I really want. So now that I've done that, I'm going to go into this editing menu. And what I want to do is brighten it a little bit, and I'm going to increase the temperature a little bit. 
Again, I don't want to make massive kind of wholesale adjustments, but I do want to make a little bit of a shift in tones. And speaking of which, uh, there's also this really cool little section here where it says color. You click on that box and you've got a color picker. And I can come over here and I can kind of shift those to a little bit more of an orange overall look. As you can see, I've slightly shifted that kind of more yellow to be a little bit more of an orange, which I like to do in uh, especially my fall photos. Uh, and that just kind of, for me, accentuates the mood a little bit. So this mask, as you can see, there it is before, and there it is now. Quite a bit brighter, a little bit more orange, a little bit more saturated, a little bit warmer. Really kind of pop in those warm tones, which is a nice complement to some of the cooler tones and the little bit of warmth that's in the sky that I already accentuated. And so that's a way, by the way, when I'm using this exposure slider, all I'm really doing is dodging and burning. I'm just adjusting the light value, the exposure value of particular color ranges. I made these brighter, so I'm just lightening that up. But you can do the opposite, which is what I will do now with another color range mask. And I'm going to come in here and grab these greens. So there we go. And again, it isolates that color and it identifies that color across a really large part of the photo. Well, it's too much for me. So in this case, I end up taking the refine slider all the way to the very lowest point, which is one. So you can see it found that green color and it isolated it quite a bit better than it did initially because it defaults to 50. And all I want to do here is take this exposure down a little bit, which is basically just dodging and burning. Here, I'm just darkening those green areas. It creates a little bit more color uh, difference and light difference, so contrast, between the, the dark green of those trees and the orange and the brighter, warmer tones in the trees around it. So if I turn this mask off, there it is before in that foreground area, and there it is now. Again, just creating contrast, just a dodge and burn. And that's what's so beautiful about this tool is because you can isolate specific colors, you can come in and adjust the luminous value or the light value along with the color. You can adjust, actually shift the color as I did in those oranges, but you can increase the saturation, luminous, whatever it is. You have so much control, which is why I say I like masking so much because it really lets you target specific areas and control them. And this color range mask, a lot of times I just want to play with a color. This is a great way to do it. Way more targeted for example, than just using like HSL and picking the yellows. So now that I've done that, uh, there's a couple other masks I would use on this photo to kind of wrap it up. Now, they're not color range masks, but I will just show you uh, a couple of other things I like to do in uh, landscape photos and cityscape photos. And that is, I'm going to use a linear gradient. And as you can see, it's a really broad gradient. I'm really just stretching this out across the photo. And all I want to do is slightly darken that a little bit just creates a little bit more contrast in the image, which I like. And then I'm going to do the opposite uh, on the, uh, the bottom down here. So actually doing the same thing, but in the opposite part of the photo. And that is down here. So I'm going to get a linear gradient down in this area. And I want to drop that to where it's really starting off screen and fading nicely into that foreground. Something about like that, and I'm just going to slightly drop the exposure there. It just creates a little bit more contrast and a little bit more um, focus on some of the areas, right? So if you turn that off, you can see before and after just a slight difference. It's really, it may actually be hard to notice in the uh, in the video. But now that I've done that, I'm essentially I'm done with masking. The last thing I would do is probably just come into calibration, which is an absolutely fantastic tool. And it really gives you a beautiful, beautiful color look. Um, I, I recommend going light with these. And I don't recommend that you necessarily use every slider every time. But a lot of times what I'll do is come in and play around, slight adjustment to the saturation sliders. And then I start moving the hue sliders just to see what kind of impact it has in the photo. I kind of like this going a little bit left on the red slider. Let me check the green primary uh, hue slider. So if I go to the right, that's a little too much that way. If I go to the left, don't really like that either. I'm just going to default that back to zero. And I'm going to do the same with saturation. And then on the uh, hue slider for blue, uh, going to the right, you get kind of that purple, and I don't want that. And if you go too far to the left, you get kind of that orange and teal, which I like, but not for this particular photo. So in this case, I'm going to reset that back to zero, but I'm going to leave the saturation and the, uh, on the blue, plus the stuff I did in the red primary. And let me show you the before. There it is. It's a pretty muted, pretty subtle change. I didn't make massive adjustments either, but before and after. So speaking of before and after, let me show you the before and after of the entire image. If you look on the left-hand side, you can see how we started, which was quite a bit darker in the foreground, pretty typical for a landscape shot, and of course, brighter in the uh, sky. But 
with color range mass and of course some basic adjustments in the basic panel. I brightened the foreground, but then I made color adjustments and light adjustments to different specific tones in the image and different colors in the image to really dodge and burn based on the color. Uh, and that allows me to really control the overall look of the photo and get an image that I happen to like quite a bit. So before and after, that's how color range masking works. It's fantastic. It's fun. It's really easy, but it's incredibly powerful and useful for dodging and burning, shifting color tones, things like that. Hope this gives you some ideas of how to use it in your own edits. Thanks for watching. I'll be back soon with another video. You guys take care. And until next time, adios.